Really, really interesting trading over here in Asia. Devil, a lot in the detail of what's going on. Would tell you on the headline figures, if you looked at the indices, that it was a fairly lackluster day and not a huge amount of move across the region. We've got Hang, uh, the Hang Seng up. You've got Japan down, here in Australia down. Also, mixed numbers in Southeast Asia. But inside it is very, very interesting. First of all, China. There was a rumor overnight that we were going to see an additional 81.4 billion US dollars, so around about 500 billion Chinese yuan being stimulated into the economy. That has actually come to fruition and has been confirmed. That is a huge change from where we were hearing rhetoric out of China and what we were listening to from Li Keqiang and Xi Jinping. They are now putting more money back into the economy. It is literally a QE program and there will be around about 100 billion for each of the five largest banks in China. That is also a change of tact. We saw the rural banks and the co-ops getting something like that at the start of the year and also a change to the repurchasing rate. No change to the repurchasing rate this time, but last time the big banks got nothing. And that is interesting because it means, therefore, it's a more broader base lending out facility. Really did move the commodity market. It was up very strongly overnight in London, as you guys would know. But again, here in Australia and also in Southeast Asia, the cyclical materials plays really did move higher. The reason it's been more interesting is the fact that the Fed tomorrow morning is certainly also driving markets. And there's no more seen than that. It was what's going on here in Australia. The four largest banks in this country are currently experiencing their worst trading day since November 13th last year. They're almost off two and a bit percent. And that is a possibility that we are seeing an end to the yield trade. It is one thing to watch. The Australian banks have also got possible pressure around housing. However, there is no data yet to see that that's slowing down. What we are seeing is a shift in the Aussie dollar. It's fallen four and a bit cents against the US dollar. It's fallen against the yen. It's also under a little bit of pressure against the euro, despite the central bank's differential there, suggesting repatriation is going on. So watching that trade very closely, then that also makes up 23% of our index here. We are very much heavily weighted to financials, and that's why we saw a relatively large drag. So it is an interesting trade, one to watch. It's why the Fed for us here in Australia is so important. If we do get a change in tone and language, the yield trade could actually be basically signaled an end from the international trade perspective and see even more money flow out of the country. So watching tomorrow morning, so important for this country. It's why we'll be watching it from South Asia and also from a Japan perspective as well, because all of that is tied up in carry trades. It's all tied up in banking and yield trade plays. And that is why the Fed tomorrow is such an important trade for Asia as well.